so I'm happy to welcome uh, my colleague Kwekbu and Israel Galadima, who are going to talk to us about their experience during their outreach project in Debian. Thanks. Okay. Um, so the title of our project for this um, outreach internship was um, Improve Yarn Package Manager and Integration with Debian. And um, I am Michael, and um, my colleague here is Israel. We are both um, university students, and we are both from Nigeria, and we were um, former outreach interns for um, the May to August um, 2022 round. So first of all, I'll start with um, an introduction to what RTG is and how it works. So RTG is um, a fellowship where um, for over the course of three months, they, um, they take in people um, under the umbrella of um, different open source organizations. And during that period, you work with mentors and collaborate and um, have a very inclusive experience um, while also talking to people from other communities and um, your fellow interns working on different other projects. So, RTT is really, really um, is a really good project um, fellowship because it's is very beginner friendly. At the time I started with um, RTT, I didn't really know much about Debian, and I've never really um, worked on Debian or any open source projects in particular. So it was a very inclusive program that made me understand that I was needed in the open source community and I would very much be welcome and taken through the learning process. So there are other open source um, projects similar to RTG like um, GSOC, but um, the major standout to me is RTG is really, really um, inclusive most especially for beginners. GSOC is kind of um, an extra level or layer um, up in terms of um, experience needed to get started, in my opinion. <laughs> so um, the outreach program happens um, by, um, annually, that's two times a year. They usually run two different cohorts. So you have the um, May to August cohorts and the December to um, March cohorts. So Israel and I participated in the May to August cohorts in the year 2022, where we worked on this project. For more info um, on RTG, you could visit the website, um, www.outreachy.org. It's super detailed, and they take you through the process of um, trying to contribute and participate in open source. <coughs> OK. so. An extra info is RTG doesn't just let you contribute to um, um, coding projects under open source organizations. There are um, open science projects. There is also documentation projects. There are design projects too. So it's very welcoming to different people in different landscapes in their tech career. So um, during the... Um, RTG internship period. Um, I and Israel learned a lot about Debian packaging. During this period, we worked on um, different packaging tools and the workflows involved in getting a package ready for distribution in Debian. I also, or we also learned um, how to communicate better because a lot of the time we had to request for sponsorship for our packages since we weren't yet um, Debian developers and we had to always be on the mailing list to discuss issues that we had. And thankfully, it was a very nice experience. Uh, before um, RTG and Debian, I was kind of shy to um, put myself out there in most forums. So I always feel, because I'm not experienced enough, then it might not be um, best to let out my problem since every other person seems to know what they're doing. But RTG made me realize, the RTG program and internship under Debian made me realize that um, the Debian community is very inclusive. Um, I was under the mentor, we were under the mentorship of Pravin and Akshay, both um, known as um, Pirate underscore Pravin on 
uh, metrics and ASD on metrics, and they were very um, welcoming. They encouraged us to ask more questions, and aside from them, every other person in the Debian JavaScript group was accommodating of our questions and um, the progress we were making through the internship period. So um, down to our projects, like I uh, introduced earlier, the title of the project was to improve Yarn Package Manager Integration with Debian. And the project had two major objectives. The first was to update Yarn in Debian, and the second to create a Yarn plugin that allows node packages um, to be installed through apps. So for the first, updating Yarn in Debian, so currently, Yarn is available in Debian, but it is Yarn version one, and um, but there is currently a Yarn two. The major difference is Yarn two enables you to um, work with plugins, which is very important because um, our project was going to be a plugin that would embed in Yarn in Yarn to help us satisfy um, node dependencies through apps. So for the second. Um, objective were to create a YAN plugin that allows Node.js dependencies installed via apps to satisfy Node.js project dependencies. Um, this is important because most times when you want to um, start a Node.js project in Debian, um, there is the tendency that some of the dependencies of that project are already available in Debian through apps. So it's a much better and more streamlined process to get those dependencies through apps than pointing um, to, yeah, to NPM itself to get those dependencies. So um, it's, it's one of the, um, one of the um, solutions that this plugin gives us. So um, the project's purpose the first purpose was Debian package testing. In, is, the first purpose is that um, Debian package testing is more robust than NPM. Um, this is true because um, for a lot of NPM packages, you're basically relying on the maintainer of that package to, to <coughs> go through the life cycle of the um, package and make sure that everything is as functional as, as it should be. So most users just um, pull different packages or modules depending on what they need. They don't necessarily care about what goes on behind the scenes in terms of maintenance and testing. Um, but for um, true apps, if you want to get a node um, dependency through apps, you could be kind. You could be sure that um, the process through which that package has gone through to be available um, through um, apps in the Debian repository is more robust. A lot of testing goes on, and there are different release cycles, so you, you, and there is much more maintenance um, involved in um, getting a package into Debian. So it's more trustworthy for a user that wants to work with um, node modules that have already been made available in Debian to pull from apps than directly from Yarn if that case is available, or if that um, situation can be satisfied. Then the second purpose is to make Node.js packaging work workflow in Debian less tedious. Um, this is true because a lot of, just like I pointed um, earlier, a lot of the packages that you see in, um, a lot of the dependencies that you need for a particular package in Debian, or yeah, to make a particular node module work, you would usually or typically um, get them through NPM, the NPM repository. But with this plugin, you'll be able to directly and automatically fetch dependencies that are already currently available in your system, rather than um, pulling them from your user slash shared .nodejs slash nodejs and um, linking them through X, X, EX links. You will just directly pull them um, automatically with the help of the plugin. So more details to follow when we would um, demo it. Okay. So. Okay. Um, thank you, Michael. 
So I'll be going into the details of how we um, achieve the different objectives for our um, outreach projects. So, okay, objective one was to update YARN in Debian. Okay, so um, for those who don't know, YARN is a package manager in the Node.js ecosystem. Um, it's similar to NPM. I think that's a popular one that we all use because NPM, NPM ships with Node.js by default. So um, we currently have YARN version one in Debian. Okay, but it's no longer maintained by upstream. That's YARN upstream. So um, YARN upstream, they split the project from YARN version one to YARN version two. So there's an existing repo for YARN version one, but it's no longer maintained. It's called YARN Classic. So from version two and above, it's now called YARN Berry. So we currently have YARN version one in Debian, but it's no longer maintained. And yeah, YARN version one depends on deprecated packages like node requests. So um, we would like to remove YARN version one from Debian and replace it with version two and above. Um, so how did we achieve um, updating YARN in Debian? We indirectly updated YARN in Debian through callback. Okay. So what is callback? Um, before I explain that, I'd like to give an overview of the Node.js package manager ecosystem. So like I mentioned before, Node.js ships with NPM by default. So there are existing um, alternative package managers with interesting features in the Node.js ecosystem. For example, Yarn supporting plugins that can um, modify all of its behavior. We have PNPM. PNPM, um, an interesting feature of PNPM is that it reduces this um, Node.js bloat, I mean, Node modules bloat. Like, if you have one project um, installing um, a Node package, and then you have another Node.js package installing that same uh, package, it would have a central node module folder that gets both of them. Um, you get both of them from that folder, so it just um, reduces duplication of Node.js packages on your system. So there was a discussion in Node.js upstream to replace NPM with one of these alternatives because it looked like NPM was lagging behind, um, and these um, alternative package managers, PM, PM, Yarn, were you know adding interesting features. So um, that's the link to the discussion if you want to check it out. So the discussion was resolved through callback. So callback acts as a bridge between a Node.js project and its package manager. So this was, so how did they resolve this discussion through callback? The decision was that, okay, um, Node.js won't ship with any package manager by default. It will ship with this script called callback. So callback, what it does is that it, um, Core pack, like I wrote, bridges a Node.js project with this package manager. So you ask Core pack for, for um, what package manager you want. That's YARN, NPM, or PMPM, which, whichever you want, and the version you want. And so it would um, silently at the background get the binaries for, um, get the binaries for that package manager at that version, and it will run um, whatever command you've, um, you've requested for. Yeah, so that's how the discussion was resolved. So currently, Copac is um, ships with Node.js, but also NPM ships with Node.js. But in the future, um, NPM will be removed from Node.js, and so Copac will only remove. Yes, yeah, so um, Copac is currently in the Debian UQ. Um, FTP Masters are still reviewing it, so very soon it will be available for downloading. Debian is stable. Um, however, we are still working towards building YARN from source. That's YARN Berry to directly replace YAN version 1 in Debian because YAN Classic is still in Debian, but when we update it to version 2 and above, yeah, it will be completely gone. So, objective 2 was to create a YAN plugin that allows Node.js packages installed via apps to satisfy a Node.js project dependency. That's quite long, but the whole gist is that, okay, so some packages in the Node.js ecosystem are available via apps, right? So if you go, um, go to add, you can check for maybe Node Express. Express is very popular. Node Express is in Debian. Um, and some other important packages in Node.js, we can download them from apps. So we'd like to use um, these packages as dependencies in our Node.js project. So for example, if I'm a developer now and I work on 
my host system is Debian. I would like to use um, Node Express from apps instead of downloading from the NPM registry. Okay, so how were we able to achieve that? I mentioned before that Yarn Berry, that's Yarn version 2 and above, they support plugins which um, allow us to modify all of its behavior. Okay, so we achieved this objective through <coughs> Yarn plugins. So um, I'd like to just explain what happens when Yarn adds a dependency to a Node.js project. So there's the resolution stage, the fetch stage, and the link stage. But I'll be talking about the resolution stage and fetch stage. So the, resolu the resolution stage, when you ask Yarn to add Express to your Node.js projects, what happens is that, okay, Yarn says, okay, you've asked for Express. So it finds, okay, what package, what, package, what Node.js package are you asking for? You're asking for Express, okay? Then at what version, at what version, um, what version should I download, you know, Express at? So if you don't specify any, any version, it will get the latest version from the NPM registry. If you specify a version, it would, um, if you specify a version, it will download that version. If you give it a sample range, it will semantic version range. It would get the, the latest version that satisfies that range. So that's what the resolution stage does. Then the fetch stage, okay, is okay. Now I know what particular dependency I'm getting and the version I'm getting. So the fetch stage gets it from wherever. The NPM registry can be from your system. It can be from, when, from wherever. But the link stage beyond concerned about that. So this plugin modifies the answer resolution and fetch stage. So basically what we're doing is that, okay, at the resolution stage, um, our plugin, um, when you ask Yarn to add a dependency, it checks um, Debian or Node.js packages that are available through Debian. It checks whether that package is available in Debian, and then it fetches it else it's uh, default to the NPM registry. So if that package isn't in Debian, it's uh, default to the NPM registry. So our plugin has introduced some commands, um, added some commands to um, YAM PKG. So we have YAM PKG apt add as a drop in replacement for YAM add. So YAM add is what, you, I mean YAM PKG add is what you use to add a dependency to a Node.js project. But with apt add, it adds this extra step of, okay, we check if it's in Debian, if it's in Debian, we get that, else we do what Yarn add to do. Same with Yarn install also. Yarn install, you have your package.json file. Um, so Yarn add install would go through those dependencies in your package.json file as it's trying to resolve and fetch, checks whether we have it in Debian. Um, if it's there, we use that, else we go to the MDM registry. So apt recess is to revert your package.json file to um, what it was before you used the previous commands. I think I'll just show that in the demo. Okay, so I'm going to demo the plugin in its usage in a new project and existing project. Okay, so this is the this is the project readme file on salsa. So So okay, the name of the plugin is Yarn Apps Plugin. So getting started, you know your prerequisites, you need to have Yarn PKG installed already. Then you need to have PKGJS tools written by Yard. We use a tool there called Notepad for finding um, for finding the Node.js packages that are available in Debian. So because we haven't packaged the uh, the plugin in Debian yet have to develop the plugin that's build it locally on your system so I think I'll just I'll just do that now so okay the first step is to git clone clone the repository I've done that already here in yam plugin app so these are the source files for the plugin so you set version to bury which I've already done before then you install the plugin dependencies, which I've already done before. So if you look at node modules folder, all the dependencies for the plugin are installed. So 
you deploy me with this command, they have to kid you wrong. Okay, so it's built the plugin, and they've given us the path to the plugin, home slash Israel default, whatever, plugin app.js. So we built the plugin, fine. So <coughs> adding the plugin to your Node.js project, so there are two workflows if you have um, an existing project or you are starting up a project, right? So I have here a Node.js project that's supposed to be new. So I named before that my Node.js project. So so I'll import the plugin now into into this project using this command. So YAMPKG plugin imports. So the path to the bundle that was built before. So, it has imported it into my project, so now I can use the commands within this Node.js project, okay? So now let's look at the usage. So I mentioned before that there are three commands. So I'll show yarn pkg apt add. So this will add a specified package from locally available app packages. So let me use this example here. Enhanced Resolve is um, uh, an M a Node.js package that we have in that we have in Debian. So, YAMPKG at add Enhanced Resolve at so the current 5.0.0.0 is the version that we want. So what will happen is that the plugin will check whether the Debian version satisfies the same bar range. And so if it does, it will add it to the projects, else it would default to the NPM registry. So I run that. Okay. Yes, so it added it to the Node.js project. So if I look at the, the package.json file of Enhanced Resolve, you can see the version up there is 5.10.0. So this actually um, it satisfies the sample range that was asked. So it should it should get resolved in our I mean it should get added to our project. And so the dependencies too, graceful FS and tapable. If it also like resolves recursively, so it adds enhanced resolve, then it also checks like the dependencies, <coughs> whether they satisfy um, I mean the requested range satisfies what's available in Debian. So if you look at the node modules folder, yeah, so enhanced resolve is there, graceful FS is there, tap people, and these are from Debian, not from the NPM registry. If you also look at the package.json file, you see that it's added enhanced resolve there, yes? But if you look at the difference, normally there'll be NPM in front of the server range, but there it's apt to show that this was added through our, our um, plugin. And so then also if you look at the log file, so a lot of information here, but if you look at enhanced resolve, resolve through apps, resolve through apps, graceful FS to resolve through apps, tapable to resolve through apps. So all our project dependencies were gotten from Debian, none was fed from the NPM registry. So um, another workflow is if you have an existing project. So this is Express. I cloned Express. That's the uh, web server framework in Node.js. So if you have an existing project, you can run yarn, yarn apt install. So it will go through your package.json file and try to resolve as many dependencies there as it can in Debian. If not, it defaults to the NPM registry. So let's try that. Yarn pkg apt. Stuff. Okay. That's the resolution step. Okay. So let's look at our our log file. So we can see 
okay, this dependency, AMP, at AMP project, we might be able to resolve through Act. Um, Babel, no, not through Act, just got it through MPM. Babel call through MPM. Babel call through MPM. Okay, yes, okay, but we can see some, some dependencies here were resolved through Act. Basically, it just checks if the available one in Debian satisfies it adds, else it goes to the NPM registry. So you can check your log file for that. So going back to the, um, to the previous project, I mentioned that the package JSON file has this app uh, protocol in front of it. So if you'd like to revert that back, you can just run yampkg apps reset. So if you check your package JSON file, it's clear the apps from it. So yeah, those are the workflows that can be used with the plugin. Yeah, so this is the project with me. You can go to it later. So okay, so future work for the plugin. We'd like to improve performance because it's a bit slower than we'd like. Um, yes, and then we'll also have to package it for Debian because right now we need to go through some processes to um, build it manually by yourself. Would um, in the future would embed it in Yarn version two so it'll be available um, for download from apps. Thank you. Okay, um, um, to add to um, future work that was introduced um, earlier, so um, part of packaging it um, for Debian, so you wouldn't have to um, necessarily go through uh, most of the workflow to build it yourself. Um, there is also um, the idea of not trying to enforce it on users by giving um, users that want to um, normally just work with Yarn themselves to not um, automatically uh, or directly um, use the plugin without having to um, activate it themselves. So it gives users the necessary freedom to work with the plugin if they want to and disable it if not. Um, so post internship, um, Debian Nigeria. So um, thanks to Altrichi and and our mentors, Previn and Aksh, um, Ashley, and um, some other uh, members of the Debian JavaScript team. A number of um, Nigerians have gotten involved with um, the Debian project. And um, as of last year, um, during the DebConf 22 in Kosovo, um, Tunji and um, Caleb were available and um, early this year, they mentioned the idea of starting um, a Debian community in Nigeria, and that has been going on well so far. We usually um, we have um, meetings every fortnight where we try to discuss about what's happening um, in the Debian community in Nigeria, how we could grow it, and also try to introduce new members into the community. So right now, since it's just um, a, rec a recent um, events. Most of what we do is during our weekly meetings, we um, do some packaging work depending on um, what you're interested in. And we also try to, um, in our little way, document the work so that um, future or newcomers to the project would be able to see what we've done in the past. We feel this would be a good way to introduce more people in Nigeria to the Debian project because 
Debian um, isn't too um, popular in that climate. Okay, so um, we'd like to give thanks to Software Freedom Convert Conservancy for and Debian for organizing and participating in the Outreach Internship. And we would like to give thanks to very much to Praveen and Akshay for the mentorship during our internship period. And we would also like to give um, special thanks to every other member of the GS team and um, the people that frequently tried to respond to our complaints in the um, GS team mailing list, um, like Yad. So um, they made the internship experience worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we started late, so we are going to have a few moments for questions. Uh, are there any? In the beginning, you told that Autoitry is more beginner friendly than GSOC. For me, I think it's depend, it depends more on the mentoring organization, how well they are onboarding their contributors. Okay, okay. Um, um, for a bit more context, um, I was referring to um, both um, programs, uh, um, the success of both programs really depends on the mentors and how involved they are um, in the project and with their students. But by my reference earlier, I meant that Outreach gives you um, a very um, low level opportunity to enter into a space that you're not used to at all. Um, with GSOC, most times you, you probably might need a bit more experience in terms of you've probably been a little bit involved with the project before. But before Outreach, Outreach gives you a contribution period where you try to test your, your work and get used to um, the workflows of that project. So before um, Outreach, I and Israel had never done anything um, close to Debian packaging. In fact, it was um, during Outreach period that I really knew what was going on um, in the Debian ecosystem. But both programs are very good for students that are willing to try out open source internships. So in Outreach, probably it's that Outreach does more from, out, from the Outreach side, more organization of onboarding the students. And in Google Summer of Code, perhaps we have to do it ourselves because we as open printing as a mentoring organization, we do not wait for the, for the, for the student uh, application period. We already start many months before finding the students and and letting them fixing bugs, compiling cups, and so on. Perhaps in Google Summer of Code, this is not organized by Google Summer of Code. This every uh, mentoring organization do, does by themselves. And in out Outreach, it's more organized by Outreach. Do I understand this correctly? OK, OK. Um, yes, so yes. Um, both programs are very good. I love both programs. Um, the major standout uh, um, from what you mentioned is for Outreach, you're basically tested based off what your contributions you made during the contribution phase of Outreach. If you've been in the community for a year, you aren't based, you're not, um, that isn't the criteria for picking you, usually the criteria. It's usually based off your contributions during um, the one month contribution period. Thank you. Is there more questions? All right, then thank you, Michael, and thank you, Israel.